Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here are three cases about early treatment, and today I'll show one of them to you. Uh, she is almost 11, and as you can see, her profile was a little bit concave. And here, anterior cross bite was her main concern. It looks very easy, but in fact, she had three irregular incisors here. And the lower, we found a residual root and a decay on the other side. From the panel, could you see the two impedic cuspids? So actually, this is a case of anterior cross bite combined with impedic cuspids. So to get a comprehensive check, we used a uh, abial discrepancy index. As the result showed, in overjet, here we got three points plus one plus six points, total 10 points. It was the major issue among these items. And the occlusal relationship here is plus one, so we got zero. As for the last item, we got four points due to two impedic cuspids. So the total score is 20, showing that this is a difficult case. So the problem we found were first two impedic cuspids and second three incisor anterior cross bite. And the deciduous second molar was a residual root. Should we do early treatment in this case? So let's look at the indication says. First, it says that the case should be very easy to solve. And I believe that the anterior cross bite is fit in this criterion. And the second, it said the case should be very tough to solve. And impedic cuspid should fit in this criterion. And for the last one, I think both of them may result in functional disturb disturbance. So no doubt we should do it. So our treatment plans were first to maintain her strep profile and her class one molar relationship. So we do non-extraction. And second, we correct her anterior cross bite. And next, create space for the impedic cuspids. The last one, we maintain space for the lower, uh, lower second bite. Then we started with a two by four appliance on upper arch and use lingual arch on lower for space maintenance. Do you see that? That is biteable to correct anterior cross bite to open the bite. And here, at the same time, we used omega loop to flare upper incisors. Uh, please look at the animation. Uh, the upper incisors were flared after the wire was placed and activated. Five, min uh, five months later, the cross bite had been correct. You can also see that in occlusal views and lateral views. At the same time, the lower second bite erupted, so we removed uh, the lingual arch. In the 14th month, uh, we inserted uh, open coil spring to create space for impedic cuspids. And also, we changed to Damon 3MX brackets. And notice that always remember to close up the bracket. And the other one, notice that we didn't bound the lateral incisors because we want to make the lateral incisors as free body so that we could prevent the, dis dis the disturbance of the traction road and also prevent the root resorption of the lateral incisors. And then 
we took a combined CT to find out the accurate position of the impacted car speed. Then we designed our surgical approach, uh, a big position flat, to, pre uh, to preserve uh, carotenized gingiva around the crowns. Uh, the surgery was done by Dr. Chris. After reflecting the flap, we trimmed bone around the crown down to CEJ. And also we removed bone uh, on the traction road. Then we bound the crown with eyelet and paw chain. Then we hooked the paw chain to arch wire and suture. Finally, we covered the wound with copac. Uh, the same procedure was done on the other side. One month later, you could see that uh, the soft tissue on both sides looks healthy due to uh, uh, because uh, we preserved the carotenite gingiva because of ideal flap design. Three months later, uh, two impact cusp beads were gradually dragged into the occlusion. Then six months later, they were aligned into the arch, but we could see the scar formation result from the surgery. 31st month, uh, both arch were leveled and aligned. Then we finished the case at, in the 37th month. And now the girl has a balanced profile and a beautiful smile arc. You can see uh, the upper arch had been aligned and developed, developed successfully. And also the lower E space were maintained for its successor. From the panel, we could see that two embedded cuspids were dragged into the occlusion without harming the root of the lateral incisors. However, we removed the appliance before the maxillary second molar erupted, fully erupted. That's because the treatment time had exceeded for more than three years. So uh, we would like to do some minor adjustment if uh, the maxillary second molar erupt into unfavorable position. Let's see the step. She still has scaled class 3 tendency and need long-term follow-up because her pretreatment MB is 1 degree and the post-degree is minus 3. And the sagittal growth of the mandible was significant during the treatment. The lower incisor was upright and uh, correct the anterior cross spine. So now we use CRE to evaluate our treatment result. For the alignment, there were five point deduction. And there were another five point deduction on overjet. And the occlusal relationship is class one, so there's zero deduction. In total, we deducted 22 points. And the major uh, discrepancy results from the flared upper lateral incisors. Here we could see that. Uh, that is because every time we try to move our lateral incisor labially, it always, uh, the, the crown always moves than the root. So it results in um, insufficient labial root torque. So if we could treat it again, we could add a talking spring to enhance labial, uh, expression of labial root torque. 
So there were several approaches to correct anterior cross bite. And treatment approach number four and number five are indicated in multiple tooth or tooth rotation. Since our case is uh, anterior cross bite combined with impedic cuspid in the mixed dentition, so we used two by four first and followed by four treatment. Uh, so I think some of you may still confused which case we should do early treatment. And now I want to share my experience with you. I think uh, if we, uh, we're going to do early treatment, especially in some complicated cases, we could, have, we could achieve a better result um, uh, by eliminating irreversible damage, such as um, even uh, uh, like enamel wear, then if the case still need second phase treatment, we could shorten the treatment time in phase two. Thank you for your listening. <laughs>